text. Um, when you look at another translation, Jesus says, I must need to go through Samaria. Uh, the revelation is there are some things that have made you cry. There are some things that have broken your heart. But today you've got to resolve, I needed to go through that. that there are some disappointments that you faced in ministry. There are some disappointments that you dealt with in life. But before God can get the glory, you're going to have to resolve and say, I needed that. I, I know you may be still bitter and upset with the person that God used to take you through it. But you're going to have to resolve and say, I needed that. that you have experienced in life it was necessary for where you are right now. I heard the songwriter say if I never had a problem how would I know that God could solve them. So I'm saying number one you've got to be fixed on the path. I don't care how many challenges you face. It doesn't matter how the winds contrarily blow against you. Be faithful to the path. And the second thing is you have to be faithful to the purpose. Everybody shout purpose. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, let every man abide in that calling wherein he was called. We have to learn to do what God has anointed and gifted us to do. You got to be content with your path, your purpose, and your potential. And I understand that when you know your potential, you don't feel the need to compete or compare. One of the challenges in the church is that we spend too much time competing with one another. And then we compare ourselves to one another. But brothers, tap the brother next to you and tell him, I'm not in competition with you. I'm not even comparing myself to you. Because God has given all of us a kingdom uniqueness. And I believe that with every gift, God has already created an audience. Oh, yeah, me here. I don't want to get off the subject, but I want you to know that when you know who you are and when you know what you're capable of, you don't get involved in competing with people in unnecessary battles. I was having preach hours going down the highway a couple of weeks ago on my way to my church in Dallas. And I have a little little Mercedes sports car. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, because most of the time it's just me by myself. Can't but two people get in there, mother. And I'm going down the highway and I don't believe in getting tickets. So whatever the sign said on the highway, I said cruise control and I took my feet under the seat and I enjoy the ride. So I'm going down the street. But again, I tell you, uh, it's a sports car. And so I can get up to about 160 miles an hour on the speedometer. And I, when I was going down the highway, a gentleman pulled up next to me in the Dodge Challenger. I know what you're talking about. I don't want to offend nobody that's driving the Challenger today. It's a good car. Keep it. Keep going. No move. He pulls up next to me in the Dodge Challenger. So while he pulls up next to me, he's revving up his engine. He's trying to provoke me to race. And I look over at him and all sorts of thoughts went through my mind. And I, I remember several weeks ago that I drove a Challenger. I got it from Hertz. And uh, I realized that uh, I remembered that he could only go 140 miles an hour. I, I also happen to know uh, that the Dodge Challenger souped up um, can, it only has about 480 horsepower, uh -huh. while my car has 660 horsepower. <laughs> so because I knew what I was capable of, I just let him go on by.
bonds of shadows suggest one thing to me that you've got more confidence in the storm to overcome you than you have in the God to bring you through. I'm going to say it again. I said, how you respond to challenges says you have more confidence in the storm to overtake you than you have in the God to bring you through. Get on your neighbor for the sixth time and tell them, who do you trust the most?